For the last lecture of this section, I'd like to speak briefly about the plugin Affix. For this demo, we're going to look at this bulleted list, which is on the left side of the carousel. So we're going to go to the Bootstrap site on the JavaScript page, and we're going to go to the section for the Affix. You're going to read that there are different ways to set up a navigation by using the Affix. If you look on the right, this is a sub-navigation that we have on the Bootstrap site and it has been positioned by using the plugin Affix. So we're going to read further about the usage. So in order to position the sub-navigation by using Affix, you can use different classes, Affix, Affix Top, or Affix Button. You can also use the data attributes, and for that you're going to need to inform the action, and that's going to be data spy Affix, and two other attributes will be used in order to control the positioning. Finally, you also have the options to use JavaScript. So we're going to review what we have on the back end in our source code. So here we have the section for the affix. We have a div with two data attributes. So the first to indicate which action to happen. And we're indicating that we want this some navigations to be positioned 480 pixels from the bottom. So this is how this looks in the browser. Let's try something quickly and remove the two data attributes. Then we're going to see what happens when we reload the page. So here it is. We have our some navigation, which is all the way to the bottom under the pop over section. The reason it is at the bottom, below the popover demonstration, is because this is the way this is indicated in the HTML markup in our source code. As per the markup, the source code, so the popover section is coming first, before the section for the affix. So we're going to put back the data attributes, and what it's going to do is that this is going to absolutely position this sub-navigation. So we're going to try another value just to see what would be the results. For example, 300 pixels from the bottom, we would have the sub navigation sitting next to the pop over button. And back to the code, we're going to bump this number to 350, see what it does. So here we go. So now the sub navigation is slightly over the pop over section. That's it. So I'm going to revert back to the original in order to have the sub navigation next to the carousel. To complete this lecture, I'd like to mention two other plugins, but very briefly only, because we'll have a chance to see them more in details in another section for the project's development. So what we're going to do now is a quick demonstration of the popover JS and also the scroll spy JS, and this one will be added to the navbar. So we're going to start with popover JS we'll see that by mousing over this button, we have a popover message which is showing up. And it disappears when we mouse out. We'll have a chance to talk about it more later. Next, I want to mention scrollspy.js, which is another plugin, which gets attached to the navbar. And once the function is hooked to the navbar, so the active links will be updated based on the scroll position on the page. So now that we've clicked on Collapse, we are now on the Collapse section and the active link has been updated. So now we're going to go to the Tab section and here now we have the active link on the tab. And same for the Carousel and Affix.